Now that brings us to 10 to 12. Um, so let's now jump back to the closeout report on, um, where are we, item 12, the closeout report for council, the council voice upgrade project. So if we can bring staff for this one to the table. Now, maybe we can get this done by about 12 o'clock, 5 past 12. If we can, that would be great. If we can't, we may need to um, break this item so that we can then move to the um, loan application Canterbury Cricket Trust item while we've got the people that we need in the room. Let's um, see how quickly we can get through this one. So item 12, closeout report for council voice upgrade. Um, Penny, thank you for joining us. Um, are there any comments that you wanted to make on this report? And then we'll move to some questions. Okay, so um, good morning, councillors. I'm Penny Truslow. I'm the team leader for capital projects in the IT group. So I'm going to take that you've all read the IT closure report, and I'd just like to cover off some of the content, and then I'm happy to answer any questions. So the key objective of this project was to replace the existing old ageing phone system. It was end of life, um, and we needed to uh, replace it with a, a modern digital solution that had you know, better functionality and some cost benefits. Um, it also addressed an emerging risk uh, with the old phone system where um, getting replacement parts and replacement models of desk phones was uh, becoming hard. Um, at a high level, the project delivered on time and within the planned budget. Um, it also um, it delivered the benefits that were identified when we uh, started this project. At the close of the project, uh, we took a lesson, we did a lessons learnt uh, with both project staff and we got user feedback. Uh, one of the key takeaways was that um, the, using floor walkers during the rollout actually helped end users with the new technology. Um, all the other lessons learnt uh, have been captured and prior to any start of a similar project, we will review these so that we can learn from it. Um, the initial customer survey, you've got the results in the closure report. Um, as you can see, the solution wasn't well received, um, well, not as well received as we hoped for. Um, as we dug into this, it became apparent that staff uh, were missing like the physical nature of a phone on the desk instead of, you know, the new solution uh, was a headset plugged into the desktop. The technology is working well. Um, but the change has taken longer than you know, was originally thought. As of last month, we did roll out another survey to gauge our user understanding um, of the engagement and whether they've taken it on and using the latest you know, features and functionality. We will uh, analyse that survey um, and we can come back to you with some results. The highlight, though, of the project was we engaged uh, Kilmarna Enterprises to uh, refurbish the headsets. <coughs> which is providing some sustainability around you know, the investment that we made. Um, that's the project at a high level. I'm happy to leave it at that, and if you've got any questions, um, I welcome them. Great, thank you. Are there any questions on the report? Melanie. So I think you just talked about it, the customer feedback. So when it says users, is that staff? I it's staff. Because when I first read it, I actually thought it was residents, but anyway. No, no, <laughs> this is... Um, it was our internal phone system uh, so that we used like in Civic and we right. used it at the libraries. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Any further questions? Yanni. Yeah, um, thanks. I was just, just wanting to check in terms of the system. In an event of losing power, how does it, how does it cope? Uh, power, we would... Um, it's like any, because it's, it's on our network, so the same thing would come into be. It would be like, you know, that we have UPS's power systems in the basement. It comes under that business plan there. So do all of the facilities that have Skype for business have secondary backup power? Uh, sorry, I couldn't answer that. Right. I'd have to, um, that would have to go to one of our technical yeah, people. Okay. I mean, I guess the question for me is, did we do enough consideration of resilience in, a, in the event of a disaster in terms of the technology? Yes, um, we, when we chose the technology, we looked at it there. We also looked at um, a DR solution for Skype for Business, but because it's on our network, it comes under the resilience plan for that. So like if, if we have a disaster, 
all of council, our doors are all computer, you know, we use computers to get in. So it fits into our BCP plan there. The detail, sorry, I'd have to take that That's away. Cool. Um, okay, cool. Thank you. No further questions? Ben. Sorry. I just found it quite hard to do the cost benefit analysis, you know, because <coughs> of the different the different panels and the different things. So have you, can you just describe that in really simple terms? You invested capital, yes. um, you, you um, got an, an OPEX saving, yes. um, and you know, how long before you pay back the investment? You know, like it's just that, it's that basic cost benefit. I'm sorry, I, might I, I just thought the closeout report would include that. Is that not? We, we invest capital uh, as part of our long term plan. The yes. savings are operational savings that come out of the IT yes. um, operational budget. Yeah. Um, but a closeout report would cover both, wouldn't they? Yes. Sorry. So I'm going to. Um, sorry, and, and it is, it, uh, I'm sure it's in there. But I'm just yeah. finding it really hard to. It, it's read. a quite a um, it's it's a close out report that has a lot of information. Uh, good morning, Chair. Good morning, Council. Uh, I'm Jed Clink. Uh, I'm here in my new role in terms of IT planning manager. Uh, the emerging benefit uh, to count to uh, Leanne's question, approximately two thousand two hundred dollars per uh, per month saving in terms of moving to the new system. Look, we can come back and check in terms of what we've realised. The old system. This is prior to me starting. The understanding was uh, it was failing. Uh, we could not get parts from regular suppliers. And in the, in the grand scheme of things, it was decided to move to a digital platform. Uh, to answer Councillor Yanni's question, the, uh, <coughs> the backup batteries, I believe, uh, will suffice in terms of council facilities. I need to check with facilities in terms of Bruce exactly what we cover in terms of the external facilities to Civic Council. The report, though, that disaster recovery was part of the remove. You removed that from the scope. We, so. we, we removed disaster recovery for just the Skype for business component, but because once you bring a network up, Skype works because it's held in our data centre, which is off site at Perimeter Road, and that is um, part of our DR plan for the wider council IT. So we were looking at putting quite a separate standalone. Skype instance, we don't need that. And it was too cost prohibitive. In a disaster, we would probably move back to cell phones. We could even use Skype with the cell with the Skype app on our phones if we needed to. So it runs on the digital network, whereas uh, you know, and that, that is that is part of the council infrastructure. The specifics around where it would work and how it would work, I can find out for you. All right, thank yeah. you. The survey um, is one area that certainly stood out for me and realising that there's a further survey to be done but that's been um, delayed as you said. We have sent it out in the last month. I, I started looking at the, the results that have come in. They're not all in yet. Um, we can come back with the further analysis of that. If you, if I that think that would be really good yeah. because yeah. The, the survey, um, the customer feedback as it's noted here, would give rise to some concerns. Um, particularly, you know, the overall positive versus the overall negative. Um, clearly, the predominance was negative, mm -hmm. um, and 47 of those negatives have been around functionality. Um, if that continued to be the case, I think we would we would want to know that there were some problems there that were capable of being resolved, and that something was happening to resolve them. Yes. So, if you are able to bring back the updated, um, more recent survey. Um, that would would help, I think, give us a level of confidence. I don't really want to, to dive too much into the customer feedback in that earlier stage unless there's something there that's still relevant now. So maybe if you were able to bring back that section of the report so that we can compare that first survey with the, the second survey, that would be helpful in being able to have a proper discussion about that at that time. Absolutely. Great. Thank you very much. You. Um, Anne, you've got a question. Just a quick question. Hi, Penny. Hi, Jess. Um, you mentioned Kilmarnock. Yes. What's their role? Is it to do with yeah. maintaining the headsets? The headsets, yep. um, you know, if someone leaves the organisation, we send them back, they've refurbished them, so we can we reuse them again. That's good. Um, yeah, much better than putting them in the rubbish. Mm. What might be helpful um, 
is to defer. So we've got the um, officer's recommendation is to receive the information provided. Um, what I would prefer is that we bring this whole report back updated with the new um, information once the um, feedback from users has been collated so that we can have a up-to-date, informed, sensible discussion about this at that time. Because if those figures do give rise to some of the concerns that those early survey results give rise to, I think we'll probably be looking for some further actions than just receiving the report. Absolutely. Um, so in terms of, Ian, this is where I need some advice from you. What do we do? Do we receive this and ask for a further report, or do we leave this lying on the table pending a further report being brought? But what I want is this whole report brought back, updated with this information, rather than just the information on its own brought back. Yep. Yep. Staff review has been completed. To request staff to bring this report back to the committee. to update the information provided in the project closer out report and report back. Just use amend number one. That's what the Receives doing. information provided. Request staff update the information provided in the project close out report for the council voice upgrade project and report back to the committee. Right, let's capture that wording. Oh, is it? Oh, right, okay. No, it's, it just needs amending. Right, so can we update, the suggestion is can we update clause one rather than having a separate clause two? That's what they're doing here. Request staff update the information provided in the project close out report for the council voice upgrade project and report back to the next finance and performance committee. I'd like to make sure that that includes not just the updated um, uh, Survey, mm. but also the return on investment. Uh, just the the the, um, the cost benefit yep. analysis in a in a more um, uh, legible form. Yep. Yeah. Now that would be good. So that's all captured. So the cost benefit to be more um, clearly presented, mm -hmm. um, and up the report updated with the survey. And of course, that might give rise to some further recommendations or you informing us that there's some further work going to be happening. Sure. All right. uh, so wording that we've now got is request staff to update the project closeout report for the council voice upgrade project and report back to the and report the updated report. No, report back to the committee including the new user server results and cost benefit analysis. That and cost benefit yep. analysis, yep, that thank you. That's all right. That um, captures it all. Chair, I was just checking with regards when the survey uh, information was coming back, just giving timings, but I think that should work. And the other thing I'd like to include is the business continuity plan, uh, yep. just to confirm uh, what that actually means in terms of the, the impact to council should we lose power uh, or different sites or remote site access, etc. Business right. continuity plan after survey results. Yeah. Survey results, Comma. business continuity plan. Yep. PCP. Yep. And cost benefits analysis. Now you're able to bring that back to the next meeting of this committee. We think we should do yes. that, yes. So let's put that in there as well to report back to the committee at its next meeting. Fantastic. Thank you. Right. I'm happy to move that. Do I have a seconder? Leanne. Any debate? Yanning. Just quickly. Um, yeah, I think it's good to get further information. I think the other thing for me that would be really interesting is to see what the other options were considered at the time. Why? Um, so just a little bit more information about Why? that might be quite useful. Just, um, but I think for those of us who lived through the earthquake and were here, the co use of copper phones when all the power went down was a pretty powerful reminder of our reliance on technology. Um, and I remember vividly Spark coming around with the 
old copper phone analog sets giving them to us to give to people in the community so i do think as a council it's really important we understand what's the plan if if power goes down um and i'm sure that we've got processes and thoughts to that but it would just be good to be kind of reassured thanks all right. Um, presumably, the original report that gave rise to this project um, would have come to council, and that's where any options would have been presented in terms of um, the, the aims and objectives of the project and, and ways that we were going to achieve that. I can't confirm that, council. I'm reading through the document, and I think it went to certainly uh, one of the governance groups called the Business Change Board at the time in terms of options. So uh, we'll find the options paper uh, and report that back. Yeah, realising that this is a close-out report on what was done, um, that might be of interest, but isn't necessarily relevant to the matter that we're considering, which was how this project rolled out and what the learnings from it might be. Thank you. Any further debate? All right, so I'll put the motion. All those in favour say aye. aye. Against. That's carried. Thank you. Thanks very much indeed.